I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to talk about recent work in my group that looks at the root of cellular responses to water extremes. We've asked a couple questions that I'm gonna to present to you in this, in this talk. The first is, are regulatory networks that control critical survival responses conserved across species? And the second one is, can dynamic water extreme response networks be resolved? And are the regulatory networks distinct in different cell populations? So my group works on rice and you can see this beautiful root system of a 21 day old seedling displayed here. We're going to delve into this area of plant research with some very technical um, gene expression analysis. But to put the work into context, we're interested in how rice responds to dynamics in the environment. And rice is a semi-aquatic species. Is it well adapted to growth in a paddy environment where the root system is waterlogged? Rice grown in a rain-fed ecosystem can oftentimes be submerged because of of a monsoon rain events that very suddenly and completely put the plants underwater. That submergence event can then progress through the life cycle of the plant if it survives to a situation where the plant is actually under a water deficit stress. There's also times in the rain fed ecosystem where the paddy field is drained early during the life cycle so that the plant has an early drought event. Rice has adapted genetic mechanisms to endure water logging, temporary submergence, which can be improved by genes such as sub-1A, and to some extent also a developmental adapt adaptations that allow them to endure a drought environment. There are rice that are grown in upland ecosystems that are irrigated, and these can also encounter a, a drought. So these water extremes are of interest to us. We've used tools to capture dynamic responses in gene activity, both involving chromatin and um, mRNA. So taking advantage of the intact strategy developed by Roger Deal, we are able to capture nuclei from specific cells and using the TRAP technology, which was developed in my lab, which enables us to isolate mRNAs undergoing translation We've developed lines in rice that enable us to look at responses to changes in the environment in tissues that are hard to get to and cells that are hard to get to, such as in the shoot base and in the developing root system. So the work that I'm gonna to talk to you about today was primarily done by two incredible postdoctoral researchers, Mauricio Reynoso, who's now in Argentina, leading his own group, and Germain Paluzzi, who is now a farmer and beekeeper in France. So one of the first things that they did was they improved intact for rice by altering the construct so that the, that the chimeric gene that was engineered first by Roger is now anchored in the nuclear envelope, allowing very easy isolation of nuclei using a streptavidin bead that enables us to use technologies such as attack the assay of transposon accessible chromatin. This method takes advantage of a commercially available TN5 transposase and with isolated nuclei, it's possible to then resolve regions of open chromatin um, following attack sequence. So this illustrates, for example, a region of accessibility five prime of a protein coding region by comparison to a control of naked genomic DNA. Intact also allows us to isolate nuclei so that we can capture the readout of RNAs within the nucleus. And we couple this with using the TRAP technology, which again allows us to isolate ribosomes based on an epitope tagged ribosomal protein L18. And with TRAP, we can look at those mRNAs undergoing translation and also look at the positions of individual ribosomes on RNA using the RiboSeq um, ribosome footprinting strategy. So together with our collaborators in an NSF funded 
PGRP project, which we call the Plasticity Project, Mauricio Germán, and Kaisa Kahala, Marco Bacic, Donnelly West, and Germán Paluzzi in the groups of Shaban Brady and Nilima Sinha at UC Davis, um, and Roger Deal at Emory University did a comparison of stress responses across four species. So we looked at rice, metacago, Solanum lysopersicum, which is tomato, and a wild um, dryland species, Solanum penelii. And in this study, we decided to look at a very simple assay of gene regulatory readout, simply by growing plants on plates and submerging them for two hours, we evaluated the response to a sudden submergence event where we know that oxygen levels within cells decline and ethylene levels within cells increase. We chose a time point of two hours because for all four species studies, there was a um, dramatic increase of a key anaerobic response gene um, that told us this was a good time point for comparative analysis. We then compared and contrasted a nuclear RNA, a total RNA, a trap or translated mRNA, and a ribosome footprinting readout for these species, and then also performed a seq looking at chromatin accessibility. The seq data and also the ribosome footprinting data um, were primarily focused on rice and metacago, although ribosome footprinting was done in all of the species. So what we found was that across these species, there's a core group of genes that fall into orthologous gene families that are upregulated by submergent stress, a short-term submergent stress. We called these genes SERPs, and they were um, identified from 6,685 orthologous gene families that could be recognized across these four species. So you can see, in addition to this group in common, there were many genes upregulated in rice, over 1,000 that were in addition to members of these families. And so this is actually family number that we're looking at. And you can see these other species had varying numbers of, of, of families of genes that were more unique to that species. It's important to note that rice had the most pronounced number of genes that were upregulated to um, this sudden submergence, which perhaps is not surprising given that it is a submergence adapted plant species. And Solanum, um, Solanum penelii had the least. We took advantage of, of the TRAP-seq and the other RNA-seq data analyses to identify the SURF genes and then use those SURF genes along with the attack seq data to ask the question whether or not the SURF genes that were upregulated showed an increase in accessibility of chromatin in the promoter regions of those genes. So this plot shows you a TAC-seq read coverage um, in relationship to the promoter regions of SURF genes that were upregulated. And we see indeed that in both rice and in Metacago, there was a dramatic increase in upregulation of chromatin on those genes and there's also downstream regions of increased accessibility. This can be seen um, in this, this um, comparative analysis of the RNA readouts and the attack seq readouts using 12 different clusters for just rice. And I know this is small, but I'd like you just to see this lighter blue peak, which is characteristic of these most highly upregulated genes. And if you scan down this attack seq analysis, you can see the contrast as we go down to the most downregulated genes within the, the rice um, transcription readouts. So uh, Mauricio Reynoso and Marco Bacic from Roger Dio's lab took advantage of both the, the um, RNA data and the ATAC-seq data to develop um, cis-regulatory network understanding for these four species. So using the open chromatin regions illustrated here for both rice and metacago, they identified cis-regulatory motifs that were enriched for all four species, irregardless of whether or not there were regions of accessibility, they sought those cis-regulatory motifs that were enriched and then combined this performed enrichment testing 
and came up with four different cis-regulatory motifs that were overrepresented across the upregulated genes or the upregulated surface of all species, and then built networks um, as a team with the other researchers. What we see here is those four different types of cis-regulatory networks and genes displayed around the outer circumference of this network that illustrate, for example, in rice, that a motif called HRPE or hypoxia response promoter element predominates in the regulation or at least in the presence, its presence in the, cis, in the promoter regions of these, um, of these genes. By contrast, in the other three species, the HRPE was not as prevalent. And you can see by looking at these networks for these three species of the upregulated genes, the decrease in number of genes that were upregulated um, across the species and this reduction in, in prevalence of this particular cis-regulatory element. The other three regulatory elements oftentimes were present in promoters, which also had HRPEs. Mauricio and, and Marco went on to show that the HRPE coincides with regions of increased chromatin accessibility in both species. This was also seen for genes that had BHLHs, presumably regulating the expression of the genes. And then very strikingly, it was shown that when one evaluated the um, increase or the induction of, of mRNA in response to two hours of submergence and the number of HRPE motifs and whether or not they were outside or inside of an attack seek peak, what we found is that increasing number and presence within, um, within an attack seek peak was um, coincident or synergistic with upregulation. So motif number and accessibility appeared to be synergistic. So I'd like to give you a little background of the biology that we learned from this analysis and more specifically in terms of this hypoxia response promoter element or the HRPE. It had already been shown through research over the past 10 years that this motif is bound by a group of transcription factors called the IRF-7s. And these transcription factors are very unique in that they are the class of transcription factors in plants that we know are destabilized when oxygen is present. That's determined by a pathway that's called the um, PRT6 indegron pathway. And it is a, a oxygen catabolized modification of the protein that targets targets it for degradation. We now know that by submergence, the, a rapid accumulation of ethylene promotes an ethylene triggered priming, the upregulation of a gene called phytoglobin that um, this protein binds to nitric oxide, which like oxygen can also stimulate the catabolism of the group seven ERFs. So by attenuating this turnover by both capture of NO or sequestration of NO and reduction in oxygen, these transcription factors, which are constitutively synthesized, enter the nucleus, bind to HRPEs, and activate the expression of a number of genes that are important in anaerobic metabolism and also both positive and negative regulation of a hypoxia response. We looked at the most highly conserved genes across the four species, particularly those which were upregulated surf genes and found that these key regulators of hypoxia response were highly conserved and were very likely um, to have control by HRPEs. So just focusing on this one PCO, um, which is a plant cysteine oxidase, which is key for this conversion of the earth to uh, a oxidized um, interminus, which is then targeted for degradation, what we see is a very strong conservation of regulation across these species with the HRPE. This is striking because we know that not all of these species are, are submergence adapted, but it is likely illustrative of the importance of hypoxia as a signaling component in plant development. And the PCOs are likely also involved in that, that process as well and upregulated in response to hypoxia, 
um, in regions such as meristems. So I'd like to summarize this first part of my talk to say that this cross-species analysis allowed us to identify 68 gene families with um, members in the four species that were upregulated across monocots and dicots. We identified that the activation of these in rice and metacago coincides with an increasing chromatin accessibility near the start site, the transcriptional start site of those genes. And we found a real contrast between the use of the HRPE in rice, which is flood adapted, and the dry land adapted Salon and Penelii, which appeared to use this motif to a lesser extent. Metacago and tomato showed an intermediate use of the HRPE in the genes that were regulated. We also found that, that the rice upregulated serfs um, were more likely to be regulated by this HRPE. And it was um, through these conserved low oxygen stabilized herb sevens. And I just like to mention, since many people know that I work on sub 1A, sub 1A is a group seven herb. It is upregulated by ethylene, but it is a poor in Degron pathway substrate. And so it provides an, um, an intriguing alteration in that pathway for in um, part of its mechanism for providing submergence tolerance in rice. So in part two of my talk, I wanna go on and tell you more about the work of Mauricio German and also of a graduate student, Alex Borowski. So in this work where we only have looked at rice and asked questions about whether or not chromatin accessibility and mRNA regulation is a dynamic response to water extremes. And we've also then asked whether or not with the trap in the intact technologies, we can look at um, responses that are distinct in cells of different developmental state and also whether or not dynamics and chromatin and transcript um, data can be used to improve our ability to build networks that enable gene discovery. So we've used intact and trap, which allow us to look at very rapid responses in gene regulation. New single cell sequencing technology that allows us to look at both attack readouts and also um, RNA readouts may not be as feasible for looking at these rapid responses. And I'd like to say those have, have come to play since we developed these technologies um, for looking at stress responses in rice. So the experiment that was carried out by Germain and Mauricio to look at rice included evaluation of responses in multiple environments. So plate grown rice was used to get a readout of, um, of um, gene expression, as well as plants grown in the greenhouse under seven different watering conditions. And then a paddy field was used to generate an atlas of data for the trap lines that we had developed for looking at specific um, cell populations. The analysis included, um, as I mentioned, looking at seven different conditions in the greenhouse. And these were a water deficit stress of five days, a water logging stress, or really just water logging in terms of rice of five days, and then a complete submergence for five days. All of these were sampled at the end of five days and a separate set of plants were sampled one day later to look at a 24 hour recovery. The age of the plants in the field were much older than the age of the plants in the greenhouse. And part of this was because we wanted them to become well acclimated and to grow vigorously in the field before we harvested them. We took advantage of trap and intact lines built by Germain and characterized by Mauricio as well that covered a number of different cell types within the, the rice root system. And I'll mention these as I go on. With these data we performed um, or we generated the data by performing TRAP-seq, which allowed us to contrast both condition and cell populations to identify things, for example, core responses or cell type or cell population enriched genes. We also used the ATAC-seq as described in part one of my presentation to look at chromatin accessibility and to look at dynamics in response to condition. 
And then we integrated these data um, through clustering, motif discovery, and a number of different um, network technologies to identify gene regulatory networks. So to demonstrate the dynamics and chromatin accessibility, somewhat similar to what we saw in response to submergence, but here looking at water deficit stress of highly upregulated genes, we see that the region of the promoter just by prime of the transcription start site can show a very pronounced increase in accessibility and that this is a reversible phenomenon here comparing in these lower peaks, the recovery and the control. And again, these were for highly upregulated genes. Looking at promoter accessibility relative to mRNA um, abundance, if we compare the mean trap mRNA for genes which are categorized by those which were downregulated in terms of, of um, accessibility or upregulated in terms of accessibility, what we see is those that which were downregulated during water deficit showed a decline in accumulation and in um, translating ribosomes, and those which were had the increased accessibility had this upregulation. So a very, um, very pronounced and also reversible um, evidence of dynamics and chromatin accessibility. We also took the data and contrasted, for example, actively dividing cells using a rice promoter called RSS1 and what we consider all cells, which was the 35S promoter, which we all know is a near constitutive promoter, not necessarily all cells. This is a cluster analysis where um, purple is up and green is down. And what you can see is that I've compared the different conditions, starting with plate field and then the greenhouse conditions. And we can see from this that there are distinctions between these different cell populations. I'm gonna draw your attention first to this cluster 20, which is enriched in cell cycle genes, which we can see were downregulated in the field, very clearly downregulated in response to water deficit, but even further downregulated in response to submergence in the um, actively dividing cells of roots. This contrasts with the readout with 35S, which we can barely see that signal. But in terms of other responses, such as a downregulation or an upregulation with water deficit stress, we can see that this signal in this particular case can be seen whether we're looking at actively dividing cells or all cells for these two readouts. We also looked at the different cell populations that were evaluated. So I show you a comparison here, again, for water deficit stress, which illustrates that there are both general cell or population specific and recovery responses that can be seen. This is a Venn diagram comparing five different readouts, showing you that there is a common response, but also specific response in these different groups of cells. And this is also illustrated by this cluster 20, where we see this is a cluster of genes that um, uh, include genes enriched for water stress responses that were upregulated across the different cell types. We also saw things such as, as this one, which was a recovery response, and another one here looking at the quiescent center and metaxylem, which was a downregulation response specifically to that cluster. We've been exploring these and taking advantage of um, enrichment within clusters and network analyses to find things such as using a line that is enriched for the endodermis and particularly the exodermal cell layer of rice to find clusters that are enriched, for example, in um, biosynthesis and deposition of suberin that's upregulated in response to water deficit stress. And then also intriguingly upregulated during recovery from waterlogging stress. This is clearly seen when looking at that particular readout and is not clear at all when looking at the 35S trap readout. Because we have attack seek data for a number of these different um, RNA populations or cell populations and trap seek readout, we've been exploring opportunities for integrating these data. Taking advantage of a pipeline that's called Tachi, which does just that, it integrates attack seek and trap seek data. We've been able to identify 
putative transcription factors um, based on their presence and activation in the TRAP-seq readout and based on cis regulatory motifs corresponding to those transcription factors in accessible chromatin. This will be more clearly described in the presentation by Alex Borowski, um, which is in the next session of this meeting. And I'm just gonna give you a little view of what we get with this type of analysis. So again, integrating these two distinct readouts of um, gene regulation. So this heat map compares and contrasts, it, contrasts what we see in the meristematic cortex, the quiescent center in metaxylem, and the 35S all cell readout for a number of different conditions from the greenhouse and also the field. Across the top, you see um, word clouds that describe types of transcription factors, because this analysis evaluated about 750 transcription factors represented in our data and identified 136, which are enriched in one or more of these different readouts based on the Taji pipeline. And so you can see, for example, in, um, in control conditions, a TCP transcription factor predominated but more specifically, I wanna draw your focus to, for example, what we see in control and water deficit for the quiescent center and metaxylem. We see both control specific, shared between conditions and condition specific transcription factors. The control specific ones are HD zips and also walks that are associated with developmental processes in these cell populations of the quiescent center and the metaxylem and there's clearly a specific stress response. Looking at water deficit stress, we see a large number of transcription factors that include many B zips that we know bind ABA response elements, ABREs. And then looking down here towards submergence, we see enrichment of ERFs and workies that include ERFs that we know, I mean, that include ERF sevens that we know bind to HRPEs. We also see, for example, a very specific field readout. So the Taji pipeline builds, um, taking advantage of this attack seek and trap seek data, a network that is focused on transcription factors, but subsequently will allow us to identify um, downstream genes. I want to show you an example of a transcription factor readout that's built particularly from the water deficit data, so control, water deficit, and water deficit recovery. And it's gonna primarily focus on these B zips in this cluster number eight. And so this is a GIF illustrating what is seen for the activity and association or the relationship between transcription factors in this cluster eight under control, water deficit, and recovery conditions. You can see by the size of the, the um, circle labeling, particularly these B zips and one HD zip in this cluster, the predominance of these transcription factors in um, relationships with other transcription factors. So each of the edges is directional. And so this is building a network from one transcription factor to the next showing you incredible dynamics between the three conditions evaluated in our analysis. And so with that, I'd like to conclude that this survey of responses to water extremes, which was facilitated by using promoters with defined domains of expression to um, use intact to look at chromatin dynamics and trap to look at mRNA dynamics has revealed quite a lot of um, variation in gene regulation in different environments. It's allowed us to see signatures, for example, of water deficit stress, which I illustrated here, include both dynamics and chromatin accessibility that corresponds to upregulation of mRNAs in terms of the most pronounced water deficit stressed RNAs. It's also by use of these defined domain promoters allowed us to look at traits which are plastic, such as suberin deposition, which um, we can see is upregulated 
in the exodermis in response to drought in this floral yellow stain, just giving you a little hint of the data that we have downstream of this. And then finally, by integrating these data sets, we've been able to, to identify cis-regulatory networks and key candidate transcription factors, which may drive changes in, um, in, in metabolism, physiology, and development that are critical to survival of water extremes. So in conclusion, I want to thank particularly Mauricio, Germain, and Alex Borowski for the data that I presented today. It was really a team effort that involved many different people, including members of the Plasticity Project, whose names I mentioned. This project is now extended to Uta Pasquowski, and also many members in my lab, and also Thomas Gerke, um, who, along with Bing Yang and Wolf Frommer, are working together with us to use these data to define downstream um, mechanisms that are critical to water extreme responses in rice. We hope that this work will be of interest to everyone and we're looking forward to soon having this online and accessible to all. Thank you very much.